this isn't a thing where we just didn't see when I hear the players and I love all the players. I love Cox and I love 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 well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great thirsty Thursday. This is, surprisingly enough, it is Super Bowl week, and it seems like we have not even been talking about the Super Bowl. I think that this is Jerry Jones' master plan where he definitely does not want the San Francisco 49ers to be able to get all that shine and stuff. We have been, boy, it was crazy yesterday. It was crazy yesterday with how the interviews for Cowboys coordinator, defensive coordinator, was just flying fast. I mean, it was like literally every hour it was something else. You know, we had heard that Aiden uh, Durden was, you know, being interviewed, of course. Uh, and, and I looked at that and said, okay, that's part of your Rooney rule rule um, right there. Because now, by the 2021 agreement, you must interview two minority candidates. And back to that whole situation here, when a minority candidate becomes uh, a coordinator, or excuse me, not a coordinator, uh, a head coach, you or a GM, you end up getting compensation. The San Francisco 49ers, apparently the owners are looking at the San Francisco 49ers that have been promoting um, so many candidates that have become GMs or coaches that they're getting number third round draft picks that some people are like, hey, wait a minute, what's going on here? The 49ers get an unfair advantage there because they're hiring, you know, all their minority candidates are getting hired. Well, if you want to reap those, then you need to get guys that can coach well that other people want. So don't be mad at the player, be mad at the game. Um, but be that as it may, the Cowboys had Aiden Durden, and last night we had heard about uh, the Jets' uh, safety coach was also being interviewed. I hate to say that, but those guys are being interviewed because of the Rooney Rule. So I believe that Mike Zimmer is the leader in the clubhouse because of the familiarity with the Joneses, uh, because of his fiery personality, because he's worked with the Joneses with multiple different coaches where – one coach comes, another one coach comes, another one coach comes, that the Joneses like a known quantity. So they want to get somebody that they know that they can control and will do what they want them to do. I was intrigued and surprised about the Rex Ryan being brought in because Rex Ryan hasn't been a head coach since 2016. I um, kind of poo-pooed that, and somebody actually sent me, let me pull up the email sent me an email and said, you know, Mark, you're wrong about Rex Ryan. Um, I'm not going to say that Rex Ryan has forgot how to coach. I'm not going to say that at all. The thing I will say is um, he, hasn't, he hasn't coached since 2016. Let me say 2016 was when I had my first 1,000 subscribers. And if you could go back and look at some of the videos of where I was in 2016 and see how much I have personally evolved here on YouTube from literally sitting in front of the TV with my cell phone recording that to what I'm able to do now with my studio and stuff where I can literally... Oh, I say it, I say it again. You've been had. You've been took. You've been hoodwinked. Bamboozled. Let us straight. To think of how much has changed in YouTube alone in 2016. It was basically me, Vosh, and um, Law Nation were about the, the, the YouTubers that were, you know, live streaming. Nobody really live streamed much. It was new and everything else. But you see how much has changed in that eight years. Now, there's a lot of people out here on YouTube, and everybody live streams everywhere, all day, and everything else. You can't help but trip over a live stream these days, talking about the Dallas Cowboys. And so my point on this is things have evolved. Now, Stephen, uh, Steve Thornhill, hey, Mark, I've listened to you 
make fun of the possibility of hiring Rex Ryan to be our DC. Have you actually went and looked at Rex Ryan productivity as a DC? I don't think you have. You're shooting from the hip on the on this bro, and you're way off base. Take a moment and look at Rex Ryan's defense. I'll guarantee you, you won't be able to understand his defense. I've listened to many players who have studied his defenses, and they can't figure them out. So why would you be so quick to make fun of Rex Ryan? If players who have played in the NFL and have played against his defense couldn't figure out his defense, um, I get you. I get it. You're a Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones hater here, and um, every day on an everyday basis. But maybe do a little homework before you bash Jerry for looking into a coach that happens to be a good defensive coordinator. That's all. Shout out to Steve uh, Thornhill. I appreciate the comments and stuff. And I'm not. Here's my thing. Again, I'm not bashing him as an ability to be a coach. I'm not. I'm just saying that things evolved. Um, John Gruden was a really good coach with Tampa Bay. Not a great team builder. He basically took the team that Tony Dungy built and took them to the Super Bowl. But he was good with the X's and O's. When he came back, not the same guy. That's my only thing is eight years, eight years, a lot of things change. The players change. The the game changes. And so what you may have been doing before may not work. But here's actually the real question that you actually have to ask. As we look through with all of these elder statesmen coaches, because let's be clear here, I don't think it's going to be Rex Ryan. I definitely don't think it's going to be Ron Rivera. And as I look at Ron Rivera, you know, Ron, uh, say, let's take the 22 season. Ron Rivera had some studs on his defense. They got my guy uh, John Ridgeway on there. They had like Jonathan Allen. They had Montez Sweat. They ended up having Chase Young. And they were a good defense, but you start thinking about the players that they had on the defense, that defense should have been exceptional. But again, I'm not trying to say that Ron Rivera is a bad coach, but I look at the body of work as him as a head coach. You know, we probably said the same thing about Dan Quinn when we was hired, and we looked at having Mike Nolan who came in, who was another former coach, and was a complete just waste of time. Dan Quinn came in. Nobody was excited about Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn did some really good things. But the real question you have to ask, the real question is not necessarily just the guy who's calling the defense. Because if you give a coach the players, for example, Norv Turner was a great coach. But when you had the Great Wall of Dallas when you had one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the history of football in Troy Aikman, when you had the all-time leading running back, okay, all-time leading running back, who usually didn't get touched until he was four yards down the field, when you had a Hall of Fame wide receiver in Michael Irving and a great tight end that was known as a security blanket in Jay Novacek and had great role players like Alvin Harper, you can look like a genius with just about anything that you called. The teams couldn't stop you from running the football. They're putting eight men in the box. If you've got a receiver that's a playmaker like that, and he's getting one-on-one coverage outside with a quarterback who's accurate, you look like a genius all the time because you've got the personnel. Now, when you don't have all of those players, you can look pretty stupid real quick. So the question now begs, as the Cowboys in free agency have their second leading sacker in um, their second leading sacker as a free agent, their third leading sacker as a free agent, as their best cornerback after Diggs got hurt as a free agent, not having any true linebackers, It may not matter who's the defensive coordinator unless they address that. You either need to keep Dante Fowler or replace him. You need to either keep um, Stephon Gilmore or replace him. 
You're going to need to replace or keep Navelle Gallimore. You're going to need to keep or replace most of your defense. And if you are not willing to put the assets out there to be a run-stopping defense, which is getting a linebacker that is a true thud linebacker, thumping linebacker, it's not going to matter which one of these guys you bring in. Mike Zimmer can coach. He can mentor. He can take good players and make them a great defense. Rex Ryan, he can take great players and make them an aggressive attacking defense that can shut people down. Ron Rivera, you give him the players, he can do the same thing. The big question is not who is the defensive coordinator, but what are you going to do to provide them with the players? It's the bottom line. Now, today, it's Thursday again. I'm sure the Cowboys are going to keep everything up hot and heavy because they, of course, want to stay in the news and stay relevant because that's what Jerry Jones does. And this is really not even really relevant that much anymore because, heck, we've already moved on from uh, Rex Ryan and and Mike Zimmer. Mike Zimmer is actually on the uh, back burner right now. Mike McCarthy still filling out his staff in Dallas. Adam Schefter, what do we know about his search for a new defensive coordinator? All right, Laura, with Joe Witt Jr. going to Washington as the defensive coordinator, Mike Zimmer interviewed over the weekend. Ron Rivera, the former commander's head coach, also was talking to the Cowboys about that job. When you talk about Mike Zimmer, he spent so much time in the Cowboys organization. They know him so well, and he's got the support of so many key people like a Deion Sanders who want to make it happen. And so, again, it wouldn't be a surprise if he wound up being the pick. Marcus, if you had your choice of all the available guys out there, who do you want as the next D.C. in Dallas? Jesus. It would be Wing Martindale for me. Um, I think there needs to be an aggressive style of play in Dallas, and I love what Wing does. And now a lot of people are super cautious about how much he pressures the quarterback, how much he brings blitzes. But Wink has shown that not only during a tumultuous season at times, he can still galvanize a defense to play well enough to keep him in games and actually win and close out some games. But more importantly, I know him personally. I know how guys respond to what Wink Martindale is, is giving them because he lives what he's saying. I think there needs to be a clear message, but also needs to, I think there needs to be a guy that comes into the building that can get these guys moving forward and motivated with a di- little different personality, and mm. that personality is aggressiveness. Yeah, at Wink Blitz on 43% of dropbacks in the last two seasons. That's the highest rate in the NFL. He's bringing it. All right, let's get to some more top stories with Adam, <laughs> starting with some scheduling news for week one. What do we need to know? All right. So well, there you, there, with Joe Witcher. There, you, there you have it. So that's the latest as of yesterday morning. And, of course, it really, really grew. I don't know. I, I'm curious. Who do you want to see as the Dallas Cowboys defensive coordinator? I'm, I'm, I just want to know. I'm asking for a friend because it's kind of cray-cray how this is just going through, and it's just like we're just throwing names after names after names. But again, it doesn't matter who you bring in if you don't bring in the players to go along with it. All right, good people. Hope you're having a great day, and I will see you soon. Peace.